Hey, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. This is Brandy the Killer. My name is Brandy. I'm Haley. And we're going to be discussing the Martha Moxley case. Now, this case is known to a lot of people, and a lot of people have different opinions on who killed her. And Except for me. Went, except for Haley. She really <laughs> don't know. So, I'm going to tell her the story of Martha Moxley. Yeah. Now, Martha Moxley was a teenage girl who lived in Greenwich, Connecticut at the time of her murder, which um, Greenwich, Connecticut is like really rich, like really wealthy. It sounds like, rich. Like, yes. It's like, like anytime someone's like, I, I'm from Connecticut. You're like, oh, we have a lot like, of money, oh, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, how rich are you, sir? <laughs> but just a little, like, info on the person that's being accused. They are related to the Kennedys. The presidential Kennedys. I guess there aren't, yeah. isn't really any other Kennedys out there. Yeah. They are like big. That and are worth a shit. Uh, how, how are they related? Cousins. So they're like really close. So like as like. You're as talking like first cousins? cousins? Like I don't or know. Or like. They always bring up the Kennedys and it's always talked about. And even one of the kids. Damn, um, that's cr- even crazier that I've. That I've don't know much about this i mean like I, I i know i know the name and i know i've heard the name referenced in things but i've never really looked into it or like read much about it and the fact that you said that the guy was related to the kennedys i can't believe i never heard of that oh i know i That's know crazy. It, it's gonna blow your fucking mind yay Plus, i'm excited I to do it um on <clears throat> halloween but you know stuff happened but she actually was killed the night before Halloween, I want to say they they think she died on Halloween. Yeah, well, it was like December or f- fuck <laughs> November, <laughs> October thirtieth, uh, October thirtieth. Okay. Bell Haven, where they lived, is the community they lived in in Greenwich. Now, Bell Haven basically was like this real. I'm talking, it wasn't houses, girl. It was estates. And Martha Mock- What is the difference between a house and an estate? An estate's like a big, like, mansion. Basically. Like, you got, like you got a lot of assets type yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, I'm <clears throat> talking... Okay. Huge. Like, I mean, it's big. So, I'm going to give you a little background on Martha. Martha Moxley was born to Dorothy and John Moxley, uh, August 16th, 1960. And her... She basically moved to Greenwich, Connecticut with her brother, John, and her parents in 1974. And they lived in the community of Bellhaven. And they lived at 38 Walsh Lane. And this comes into play, her address comes into play, because right directly across from her, across the street, kind of diagonally, is where... John Walsh. <laughs> where the... <laughs> Adam Walsh. Am I right? No, no. Where... Oh, man. Where... Um, the Skakels live, and that would be the people. The Skakels. In- now they're the. It's called now Tommy Skakel and Michael Skakel are. Whoa, the hold up, yeah. Michael Skakel. Yeah, Michael Skakel <laughs> and Tommy, or yeah, Tommy Skakel are the main suspects in this. Wow. Um, okay. Case. And also, there's one more, but we'll get into that. So Martha was like any other teen in the 1970s, calm, sweet, peaceful. She was freaking beautiful and i don't know if you've googled her yet but no i didn't i've been i've been uh uh, purposefully avoiding anything that ever has to do with her i I, because i was reading i told you i was reading an article about stuff that happened on halloween and uh came across that murder but like i knew you were going to tell me about it so i just like scrolled past it real fast right because i didn't want to like see anything or read anything because i didn't want to ruin it because i wanted this to be the first time i ever heard it i know so she was beautiful. I'm talking like five five. She had beautiful, <clears throat> long blonde hair. And in 1975, she was 15 years old. And she was excited about Halloween coming up. But she was also grounded because she actually came in late for her curfew. And her mom, Dorothy, was like, you're not doing nothing. So when Mischief Night happened, which was October 30th in Bellhaven, um, she begged her mom, please, can I go with my friends? We're going to go over to the Skakel's estate. You know, we're going to just hang out. Please, 
you know, this is like a night of mischief. Basically, all the teens get together. They toilet paper people's houses. They so she know. was she was basically saying, "I know I'm grounded, mom, but can I go toilet paper all the houses with my exactly? Friends? Like, can I go fuck some shit up?" I would have been like, "Nah, bitch, hit the fuck down. You right. ain't going nowhere." Right. Bye. So, <laughs> so Dorothy finally gives in, you know, and. So her father, he was just damn. Uh, he was like I busy, yeah. Say, so, so her father was like, uh, he worked out of town a lot, and he was actually out of town this night. And so she talked to her father, and her father and mother agreed. Okay, we'll let her go, but you better be here by curfew. You better be back here by curfew. And I honestly think her curfew was eleven or maybe ten, ten or eleven. I know I should know that, but somehow I missed that. But it's going to come into play in a second. So she lets her go. And she said that, you know, she was out. She, you know, grabbed her stuff and was like, I love you, mom. And her mom's like, I love you, too. Remember, be on time. And, you know, okay. So she leaves with her two friends. They cross her yard. Which You said she's 16 years old? 15 at this point. 15. She this crossed, happened in 75. Mm -hmm. She okay. crosses her yard and goes towards the Skakel estate. And the Skakel kids, there were like a bunch of them, kind of like the kid. I mean, there was like a bunch of kids there. And the dad was actually a widower, so he was really rich. So they're never there. He had hired a live-in tutor for the house who just started that night. And his name was Ken Littleton. I just want to give you that note. Because there's going to be a lot of people you're going to be kind of... It's confused. on. Who's Ken Littleton again? Ken Littleton is basically the tutor <clears throat> that Rushton Skakel, which is the father of Tommy and... Michael. Rushton Skakel. Rushton wow. Skakel. He's the one actually he's related to the a guy that he's the kidney. He's the brother kidney to person. Ethel Ethel Kennedy. Okay. And basically he had two boys. I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> but Okay. It went silent on my part. Oh, did it? <laughs> so mm -hmm. he basically <clears throat> would just sit there. Okay, so he was bar barely home. You know what I'm saying? Like, he barely was yeah. home. Like, he basically would hire people to do things. They had maids. They had butlers. They had that kind of thing going gotcha. on. Gotcha. So, this is like a whole different kind of fucking class. This is like money, you know? So, you said there was just two two kids? Well, or? there was a lot, but Michael and Tommy are the ones we're going to focus on. There was oh, more, okay. But... So, just two of two of the, the f few right. of children. Right. Okay. So, Michael and Tommy were you know, more of the, how can I say it? Kind of like, they just was around the same age, kind of the same age as Martha. Mm -hmm. So they all knew each other. So as she crosses the, crosses her street, well, basically her yard, which is huge. It's one of those houses that has a big U driveway in it. So it's like an estate. So I want you to think big. I'm not talking little small houses. I'm talking big space in between. Um, so she goes across there. She open, you know, knocks on the door. Of course, Tommy and them end up uh, being, you know, well, Michael ends up answering the door. He's like, y'all want to go hang out in the car? And she's like, um, yeah, let's go hang out in the car. Because she has a, a guy friend with her and a girlfriend with her. And they go and hang out in the car. So her and Michael. That's so weird to me. Yeah. So this, like, hey, here's my huge house where my dad's not home. Well, they were going out there uh, to smoke the and car. to drink, basically, just to get away I from mean, adults. I guess, but damn, you got a motherfucking estate yeah. on your hands. So they was like, let's go out to this car. So they Sit go the out car. and they're sitting in the car. And they're smoking and they're drinking a beer. And they're just hanging out. And then that happens for a little bit. And then Tommy, his a little bit older brother, comes out. And, of course, Martha scoots over and Tommy gets beside her. And it was said that they were flirting back and forth and that Tommy was putting his hand on Martha's leg and she wasn't, like, knocking it off. And it was said also that there was some tension between Michael and Tommy about that because Michael really liked Martha. Mm -hmm. So... About some time passes, they're all chilling out there, and some older cousins come out, and another brother comes out, like an older brother, Tommy, and Michael come out, and they're like, look, we want to go to so-and-so's house. Y'all going to have to get up out of his car, basically. And Michael's sitting there, and he's like, hey, Martha, do you want to go with us? And Martha's like, no, nah, I'm just going to stay here with Tommy. Basically cuts him, <laughs> cuts him down, bro. Breaks his heart. Mm -hmm. Like, no, nah, I'm just going to stay here with Tommy. 
I'm gonna hang out with your brother. Yeah. So the other two end up leaving some point the other t- her two friends end up leaving she ends up going to like the side of the house and these are and they later found this out you know later on but the first initial story was everybody left each other right then and there to- like martha walked home uh, and everybody else went their separate ways but what really happened mm-hmm. was is martha and tommy went to the side of the house and they was basically making out like fucking Making out with each other. Yeah. Ain't much else you can do. Yeah. Basically kissing all over each other, hugging all over each other, all that stuff. So she ends up uh, getting to, like, I guess he ends up getting to, like, I don't know what base it is, like, to where you're touching titty. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. But, um, like. I think that's second, second, second base. Yeah. She ends up jumping up and saying, oh, my God, I got to get home, you know, before curfew. Don't touch my titty. Right. Pro- basically, like. I need to get home before curfew. And yeah, uh, that's true. She does. She's like, I need to go, you know, <laughs> basically. And he was like, uh, all right. You know, that's what he said. Well, Martha crosses the way to go back to her house. And this is when stories change and things get bad. But this, the one thing that doesn't change is what's about to happen. So as Martha's walking over to her house, she cut through her back. Oh, let me just back up. She cuts through her backyard kind of to go to the Skakels. And it's a big, long, you know what I'm talking about? Like her house is kind of diagonal, but she's going through her backyard kind of. Mm-hmm. So at 10 PM, Dorothy is literally like at the sink doing dishes and she hears a bunch of dogs barking. And she's like, mm. Oh, my God, you know, nothing. You know, you hear dogs barking. You're like, what the hell's that? So then she goes back to the living room, and she's waiting for Martha to get home. An hour passes. Martha's not there. She's like, what's going on? So she starts calling people. And finally, it's about 1 a.m. She's like, I don't know what's going on. This is bullshit. And her brother, John, said when he walked in, because he came in on his time, that he was like, finally, she's going to get in trouble for something. She ain't. She don't ever pay it. She ain't ever listening, you know? Mm-hmm. Is this her younger brother? This is her or? older brother. Older brother. So um, she has her brother go out looking for her. Can't find her. She has um, basically, um, she's calling everybody. She calls the Skakel's residence. And his sis- and Tommy's sister answered. And Tommy's sister said, no, she- we, ain't seen any- we ain't seen her since she left. Tommy's been upstairs watching a movie with Ken, which is Ken Littleton, the tutor. Mm-hmm. And Michael's been at his cousins the Terrian's house so and he just got back at 11 30 so we don't know what's going on so she's starting to get nervous she's freaking out you know she don't want to cause any much panic she calls everybody nobody answered she ends up falling asleep on the window like they had that they had this big window so you could sit in you know and she fell fell asleep mm-hmm. there so the morning Her mom. yeah so the morning comes she wakes up she realizes she walks up to martha's room martha's still not there She's freaking the fuck out. She At this point, she's in panic mode. She starts calling everybody. She's calling friends. She's calling cousins. She's calling everybody. And a bunch of people come over to the house. And they're like, all go together to look, you know? So she ends up, uh, one of her, one of Martha's friends is crossing through her backyard or in an area of her house. I'm still not 100% sure if it's the backyard or front, but whatever. It's so okay. So, and as they get through, she sees something, like, in the trees, like, on the ground. And this is, like, literally in Martha's backyard or front yard. I'm pretty sure it's back. Like, kind of like the side. But it's so big, you would understand. if Once you look into this, because you probably will be like me, which I go research it again after I've told it. I go watch it on it. But um, she ends up seeing this thing laying like under the in this kind of like tree cubby because it's like a bunch of trees by each other and it's like you can walk into mm-hmm. it but you're not in the trees you know what i'm talking about like kind of like it's like a like a hovering uh <clears throat> where trees are all around you. i think i know exactly what yeah. you're talking about and i'm kind of spooked out right now because i'm sitting in my car by myself <laughs> and it's like almost dark like it's getting dark and like where my apartment is like there's like a big like not, it's not big but there's like trees like what you're oh describing. my god yeah so it's like right in front of me so and i'm like and i'm like scared i'm like i hope i don't get like 
car and car people should know right now we're not in the person. middle of this podcast we're actually on the phone actually on the phone doing this with each other because yeah Haley wanted to know this so bad but we got other cases we want to do so we're going to do small ones on the phone they may not be perfect audio but you're going to get the fucking point so this is <laughs> so her exactly cross coming across to actually come talk to martha because she don't know martha's missing she don't know anything she sees this thing in a distance she walks up to it she lets out a blood curling scream runs the 10 to 50 yards to martha's house which is um right there and she says oh mm-hmm. my god oh my god dorothy call the police i found martha she's something's wrong with her she's on the ground she's bleeding you know mm-hmm. so somebody goes back there and they knew right then and there when they walked up they knew right then and there not to even touch her, not to even basically touch any of the scene, not to do. They knew she was and dead. they knew she was dead because she was, at first it looked like a deer carcass. She was just laying there and it was, you know, nothing. Was she like naked or fully she, clothed? Or? She had, okay, so let me get into the front. Let me tell this part and then I'll go into what her body okay. was presented like. So she basically was like, um, sorry. So she basically was like, well, oh my God, what am I going to do? So the police comes. Let me tell you, the police fuck this entire thing up. Okay. Why do the police always fuck everything the, up? The police, part of the reason for this shit <laughs> is, um, God they damn mess it. up everything. Okay. They end up doing, like, the worst job, basically, in the beginning, okay? So, let me tell you, Mm -hmm. so, fucking, a lot of police officers show up. That's when they start realizing that she ends up, that, you know, the crime scene's bigger than what they think. Yeah. I'm sorry. Brandon uh, talked to me in the middle of it. But, uh, so basically, I'm going to have to edit the video anyway, so. So, basically, he pulls up and she's like, uh, the police pull up and everybody's, you know, everybody is basically walking through the fucking crime scene because it's the size of the yard. Yeah. It's basically the size of the yard. So, it's like, what the fuck? So they don't know that, of course. They're running through shit, and they're like, what the fuck? You know, and they start seeing the blood. So she's laying, like, kind of in a feet, like, laid out. And her pants are pulled down to her ankles. And she has something. Well, in the very first police officers, the very first two that showed, showed up, They said that she had something sticking out of her neck. By the time that the other police officers got there, it wasn't there anymore. And it was... Something sticking out of her neck like like a knife? It was okay. So I'm going to tell you. All right. So what happened to her was, at first they just seen this sharp object hanging. If they don't know, they think it's like a pipe or a knife. Come to find out, she was beat with a golf club. Guess what golf club? She was, guess whose golf club she was beat with? The Skagels. Yes, his dead mother's. Their dead mother, <laughs> Skagels. So, Skagels. Of course, they don't know that yet. They're still looking at the crime scene. She's up in this tree laid out. There's a big gash in her throat. There's like four hits in her head. One that was caught. Like, so, hold on. Are you Are you alluding to the fact that the police officers removed this object from her from the crime scene so that the Skakels would get away Maybe. with it. I'll get more into that in a moment. So, okay. of course, <laughs> That's what it it's sounds crazy. like to me. They have to call Martha's dad, tell him what's going on. <clears throat> He's got it. He found out and had to come home. It's just fucking nuts. So nobody knows what happened. They just know she's murdered. That's all they know at this moment. So the initial police you know, investigation was sloppy, largely due to the Skakels being rich cousins to the Kennedys and the influence that comes Mm -hmm. with that power. The early suspects were Tommy Skakel, who was the last person seen with Martha, Ken Littleton, which he was just a simply strange guy, but 
So basically, you know, they are like, what the fuck? So, of course, police go and talk to them and they're like, oh, well, the, it wasn't us because when I left Martha, I came up to be with Ken. He's my alibi. And Michael was like, well, it wasn't me because I wasn't even here. I was at my cousin's. So everybody put her time of death at different times. And the coroner couldn't really, at this time, I guess, couldn't estimate when it was. But he said it had to be around 9, 30, 10, right around the time when she left the Skakels. She was attacked. By who? They didn't know. But they did know that as she's walking, somebody comes up behind her with that tire iron or with that golf club and golf hits club. her one time in the head. That happens right there. She bleeds out a little bit. I'm guessing that the person that like hit her starts losing his fucking shit and hits her again. So a little bit of blood. So at one point, they en he ends up dragging her body like 60 yards to the tree. But they're saying that she was left laying there for a good 20 minutes before she was actually drugged to the tree. So like he hit her, left her there, hit her with it, the thing four times in her head, then let her bleed there for a minute, then drug her, which was a big blood drag to the trees and then took, broke the tire. He was hitting her so hard that it broke the tire iron. And when it did, he basically broke it off and stabbed her through the neck. Is it a, is it a tire iron or it's a, a golf, golf club? club or sorry. Both. I, I don't know why it's a tire okay. iron, but the golf club broke as she as <laughs> the person was broke, hitting her. Okay. And then it basically just broke apart and he was just using every piece of it. And then the only piece yeah. that was missing, they said the police, was the handle of it. But they knew that, that it was a Skakel's mom's because they had the same thing. So it was taken from the garage of the Skakel's house. And that's what she was hit with. So this is why the Skakel's were involved in it because fucking duh. You know what I'm saying? But as you know, so at this time, sh Dorothy's like, just, you know, shocked. Her daughter's dead. She don't know what's going on. This is the, the fucking seventies. The police done fucked it up. I mean, they walked all over shit. They basically fucking tore up shit. Didn't fucking do the right forensics. <clears throat> so when they do the, um, there was some DNA on her and her pants were pulled down, I guess to make it look, she wasn't sexually assaulted though, but I guess it was to just make her look, you know, sexually assaulted. So, yeah. I guess that they could just fake it out, you know, or just make it, I guess, seem like that. But a lot of people's mm -hmm. theories is that, you know, whoever hit her, it was a rage. It was like a rageful killing. Like it was somebody that couldn't stop. Like, like it was, it, it's like they lost their fucking mind and couldn't stop. Once it started, yeah. you know, they're just fucking basically wowing the fuck out. It wasn't no, random. No, it was not random. Of course, as years go by, they try to say, Michael and all them are trying to say, it was random, but nobody fucking knew where this neighborhood was. It was a very secluded neighborhood. Of course, there was, like, stories of people saying, hey, you know, uh, these people did it, and they came from out of town and did it. But who the fuck does that, you know? I mean, it could really be anybody, but it's looking more like it's Michael and Tommy. Now, in the beginning, everybody thought it was Tommy. Like, everybody, because he was the last person to see her. Nobody really knew about the extent of everything. So, come to find out, if she was murdered at 10, that's why the cops never looked, never went back to them during this time. Because they said their alibis matched. Well, right after it, Ken Littleton got fired. He wasn't allowed back on the estate. He became like a drunk and was just violent and crazy. And that's why they thought, and they fucked this man's life up. I mean, they basically, the police was like, it's him. It's this guy. And his wife who married him later on was like, it wasn't him. He wasn't a murderer. He was just an alcoholic. He had a lot of demons because I think, and this is just my theory that he fucking basically knew what happened but couldn't say anything, you know, because of their inf like he had like he either had witnessed or it or, or something because she was five, five. OK, Tommy was smaller. 
like shorter you know not Tommy but Michael mm-hmm. was shorter um, <clears throat> and whoever did it had to be strong enough to beat her like they did as strong as they did I mean that that takes a lot because there's another if you go there's an oxygen who killed Martha Moxley episode or a couple mm-hmm. episodes where they're showing you how they beat this um, golf club and it takes a lot to break it and they just didn't see at that point how a 15 year old kid a teenage boy yeah well that kind of makes sense to me too but I mean but is if there you're in such a rage evidence that is exonerating <clears throat> to the other guy the tutor um, not really just that he's Kim. weird <laughs> Well, that's, <laughs> that's what they basically say the really... whole time, you know, and basically a lot of time passes. I'm talking, I don't think there was anything, there was leads, but there wasn't nothing. So in 1992, Rushton Skakel, which was the father of Tommy and Michael, hired a group called the Sutton Group, and he paid them $1.5 million to get the, get the truth about what happened that night. This was all like years later. He wanted who who did um, he, pay? he paid this group called the Sutton Group, who were like private investigators who would gather all the information, oh, okay. and they would basically be able to tell <clears throat> him like the level of how serious his kids are in trouble. Basically, I don't know why he waited so yeah. long, but he waited a while. I guess because they DNA. So when did this he do was this? Ninety two. So I guess DNA okay. started coming out big. And they knew the DNA was going to happen. So come to find out, Tommy and Michael both lied to the police. Tommy actually didn't come upstairs till like till 1023, which would have put him right. Because Ken Littleton was actually watching a show where a race scene would have happened. And it didn't come on till exactly 1023. And that's when he said Michael or Tommy walked in. Now, it's also said, Tommy said that he didn't, he lied to the police. He actually got back a little earlier, and he actually went to Martha's house and climbed up her tree like he did on numerous occasions and sat there and went and threw pebbles at her window for her to come, and she didn't. So he jacked off in the tree and went home and went to bed. Michael did this? Skankle. The brother, the one I told you that the actually fuck? liked her, that actually had feelings for her. And when his brother came around, he was kind of upset. So. That is some okay, wild shit. Yeah. So Michael, at this point, beats off in a tree and goes home. He was basically. if This was the, this was like the night when she had, had yeah, not come home. Yeah, the night that she had not come home. Okay. He says that he came back from his cousin's. He wanted to see where Martha was and he didn't see her. You know, she wasn't there. So he walked the way to his house, to her house, climbed up the tree that was by her window, not threw pebbles at it. And when she didn't answer, he beat off and went home. If this is true, then that puts him at the crime scene at the exact time that she was murdered. It kind of does because if the crime scene was right, like basically her right. backyard. And he said he swears then... it wasn't me. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. Of course, everybody's like, "What the fuck? You're just trying to." So how old was he? How Fifteen. Old was he? How old Sixteen. Was the other brother. Okay, so they were right at the same. Right. Like, same it could have been both of them, or could have been one of them. But this is the theory that people. So eventually, Michael ends up getting charged, like in two thousand two. He ends up getting charged like 20 years in prison. So this was like 35, 40 years later. He finally gets convicted. Michael. Of course, he's like, I know you want your pound of flesh, uh, Dorothy, but it's not me. You've, you got the wrong guy. It wasn't me. And she's like, look, I just want the person that killed my daughter. I know it was you. You know, don't lie. You know, because why else would you have your fucking DNA? So, okay, the reason why he got caught up in this shit was because he made a story up basically like I was in that tree who the fuck beats off in the tree I think he was just making a laying the base ground to why his DNA would be there but his even if he did jack off in a tree that hold on are you saying that he jacked off in the tree like where she was found Yeah. like she was found underneath a tree and he was up in that tree jacking off Wow. Uh, near that tree because like... right 
that sounds like a fucking perfectly put together right. lie. So the to thing me. with me is the thing that always gets me with this case is um so Michael ends up going to jail, but then something ends up happening and the Supreme Court like basically lets him out. And then he can't be tried again. But they didn't have enough case. They didn't have enough and this happened in twenty eighteen. He didn't have to go back to jail. He spent, Why do they let him out though? Um, he, he won his appeal and they threw it out basically because when the, they had a trial and they had somebody on drugs who was high on heroin, um, testify and say that, um, Michael told him in rehab that he basically killed her, that he raged out. And it was just fucking Mm. crazy. So here's my theory on it. And this is a lot of people's theories. So, when Michael went to go to Terrian's, he ended up just not going. Maybe letting them think he went. Maybe he went and came back early. Mm -hmm. But we do know that Martha and Tommy went to the side of the house, was making out, probably kissing on each other. I think Tommy, I think Michael, I mean, seen it. Showed up. Seen them making out. Seen them hugging. And then, and probably lost his fucking mind, you know? And then probably you'd think he would go after his brother first. But I, I mean, mean maybe, maybe not, not if he was scared of his brother. So yeah, he, I think but... that as as she's walking home, he walks up behind her. Maybe he says something, but I don't think he says anything because she's hitting the back of the head on the right side once, really hard, and that's the first swing. So he comes, he's coming hard and swings hard, hits her once, mm-hmm. boom, she falls. They said she never gained consciousness again. Or no, no, she actually didn't die. She was awake. She was alive. What killed her was the stab through the fucking neck. She had a fractured skull and bled and bled there for a minute. He let either the person leaves for a minute or leaves her there for a minute and then decides, oh, shit, I can't leave her there. And then he decides, this is how psychotic whoever it is did it. Then they decided to go back, drag her put her in the tree and then stab her through the neck and then pull her pants down and everything to see. Um, and it come to find out that his DNA was actually near her or on her. So what they think is, is that he dragged her to there or maybe went and got help or maybe, you know, he did it by himself or maybe Tommy helped. We don't know because you will probably never know. And l- like left her there. So then he stabs her through the neck. And then fucking goes home. And I think everybody covered it up. I don't know. It just seems like that. Once you go down the rabbit hole of things. You're like what the fuck. So. Somebody comes forward in 2013. Like as he's in jail. Like 38 years later. To claim. I swear to God. Michael was at the Terrians. He's not the murderer. And I think that's what got him out of jail. Because this guy was like. You know, I didn't want to say anything, but he tried to tell the prosecution that they wouldn't believe in him. They were like honed on that it was Michael when it could have been fucking Tommy. And who watches a movie with their fucking tutor? It's weird. Yeah, why was he there so late? Well, he's a live-in tutor. I forgot to mention that. He just moved in that day. Can you imagine your first day on the job? (laughs) <laughs> and a right. fucking kid gets up murdered in front of you or around you. So, like, ha- had he previously been, like, a living tutor at I other places? So. I think or this like... was what his his job was. Okay. Uh, but it's just, it's just a confusing and crazy case. It makes you think, like, damn, you really think that you're friends with somebody. So, I want to read to you real quick some passages in her journal but real quick i'll tell you um it's saying detective steve described in indentation on the left temple leading from the eye towards the top of the ear the flesh was depressed as they were blown her hair was like soaked in blood they couldn't even recognize her when i say a brutal attack it was fucking brutal and yeah yeah, like I mean, it. it was really, really bad. If you, like, broke a fucking golf club off in her neck, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yes. So she, like, they ended up getting her diary, like, and it's just, 
I'm skimming through it and she sent, she talks about Tommy and um, how they're like, she thinks she's cute. She does end up talking about Michael and she's basically like, ew, like, no. You know? Yeah, she's not, it don't yeah, feel she's any. just not interested in. Now tell me again, Michael's the younger one or the older one? Michael's the younger one. Okay, so she wanted the older Yeah, one. so she was basically, I think that she liked Tommy, and it showed when, you know, it came up. It basically showed. So it's just, it's just a wild case. And it took so long to get justice, just for it to get turned back around. So I felt so sad. I would recommend that you go to Oxygen like you can go to like on YouTube wherever you have it I'm pretty sure the Oxygen Network has a four part series on this and it's fucking great and that's where I got a lot of my- yeah that's because it lays out the entire crazy um, scene for you like visual I know some people can't get it all through a podcast and I'm not going to be the one to go just listen to my story because I'm one of those people that has to listen to every fucking story out there but I feel really bad also for Ken yeah. Littleton because he was plagued his whole life with being this murderer and he really wasn't. I don't know. I still don't know if I'm not, I don't, I still don't know if I believe that he's right. innocent. It's just a very, very fish case. I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to do some digging myself. Oh, yeah. And it'll make you want to dig. And there's also a best-selling book called A Season of Perjury on the Crime. And basically, also, there's another book by, you know, the guy that wrote the O.J. Simpson, that dude, Mark something. Uh, Um, Mark Furman, that's his name. He wrote a book, too. I'm not familiar with True Crime. Right. Mark Furman, his book. He's the one that is the one that gunned for it's not anybody, it's Michael fucking Skakel. That's who the fuck it is. He basically was the one also who told them, Hey, you didn't fucking lose the crime. You didn't lose it. It's it was there. We have two police officers saying that the there was something in her neck and then it was gone. So that's why he thinks there was a lot of corruption. Of course, they didn't press on this because it was they were related to the Kennedys and a lot of, you know. A lot of it had to do with politics and stuff. And it's kind of sad that, you know, Dorothy lost her daughter in the way that she did. Period. But, yeah, I want to say that, well, that's why, you know, if your kid's uh, grounded, don't let them go out. Right. That that would be, <laughs> and that's what she said, like, in the thing, because she's, like, really old now. She's still alive. And she said it. She said I just regret it. When you watch it, because I know you're probably going to watch it after this, you're going to be like, what? I mean, I'm not saying, like, I blame right. her, obviously. You just, That's not, I you think, know, I'm not trying right. to, like, blame her for it. But, I mean, at the same time, you, you always think about, like, events leading yeah, up she, to stuff like that. And how, like, about, one thing could have yep, changed it, you know? She thinks about that all the time. I'm sure like, she that does. That would drive me crazy. And I hate, I hate that. Like, That's awful that she has to live with that. <laughs> I feel really that's bad. Sad. For and when you and she's such a sweet woman on top of it that that's it's sad in general. But that was the story of Martha Moxie. And of course, that's a condensed version. There are people out there just like with the Darley Routier case that are fucking gung ho about this case. This is a huge case that goes back thirty to forty years. And the reason also that Michael didn't get you know, they upheld his sent, you know, told him that he don't have to go back is because 20 of the people, the witnesses were dead. Everybody was dying. You know, they're, they're getting older. So nobody yeah. could testify. So he basically, yeah, basically he just saying? waited until people were dying. Yeah. Damn. So how old is he now? Um, he's in his, he would be the same age as uh, Martha, was... like in his fifties and six, okay. yeah, 50, 60s. about 60, probably 60. Well, Hold on. If she was born in 1960, so that would mean she would probably yeah, she would be, be 60. Because my mom was born in 55 and she's 50, or she was born in uh, 65 and she's 55 right now. So, But yeah. that was the story of Martha Moxley. Your mom's younger than my mom. My mom is 
57, yeah, almost 58. Wild. Yeah, so she probably knows. If you talk to your mom, if you talk to your mom, I'm pretty sure that she... Yeah, yeah, yeah she <laughs> probably does know. You know, you don't want to know something weird? It's, um, it's kind of, I mean, it's not really ran off topic because it's about a murder, but, um, my mom lived in, um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin when she was like, I can't remember how old she was. She was a teenager. It was in the seventies. And, uh, but she lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin whenever, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was like doing like his killing. Oh my God. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, she wouldn't have been a victim anyways because right. she wasn't a man. But I always thought that was really cool that, like, she lived there. Or could there you imagine being, like, right, could you imagine also shit. living where Ted Bundy lived, all them people going missing, people in broad daylight, right. like, fuck, there were so many killers in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it's unfucking real But the main one who yeah, takes people the just case... Don't- Right, kill serially nowadays it's it's like they used to. <laughs> technology, the main ones though, is going to be the Golden State Killer. Right. Yeah, I-, I watched the 2020 on that the other night. Oh yeah, it's it's good, especially the lady good. that made the book. But I'm going to end this part and then we'll talk more after. But that was the story of Martha Moxley. And um, if you have any. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. If you me. have any questions about uh, episodes that you want to hear or stories you want to hear on Brandon the Killer, you can write me at brandylatrell84 at gmail.com. And thank you very much. Thanks. All right, I'm going to end it here in a minute. But I was, I'm was i going to hang up and then I'll uh, call you or something. All right.